Good morning, it's Saturday. We continue with 1 Timothy chapter 4 today, verses 7 and 8. But have nothing to do with worldly fables, fit only for old women. On the other hand, discipline yourself for the purpose of godliness. For bodily discipline is only of little profit, but godliness is profitable for all things, since it upholds promise for the present life and also for the life to come. Paul is telling uh, Timothy to stay away from gossips, to stay away from the fables of, uh, of the world that are fit only for uh, old women. Um, just really just, just ignore all of these things. The only thing that we need to take note of is the Word of God. So many people follow old wives' tales, superstitions, gossips, and so on. We have only one authority. We have only one place where we are safe, and that is in the Word of God. And then he says, um, discipline yourself for the purpose of godliness. For bodily discipline is of little profit, but godliness is profitable for all things, since it holds the promise of eternal life, holds promise for the present life and also for the life to come. Paul is not saying that we shouldn't exercise. He's saying keep it in perspective. I exercise every day. I go to the gym usually six days a week. I walk every day. I do that because I need to maintain my physical body, I like to be in as good a shape as I possibly can so that I can continue to this ministry and continue to the work that God has called me to do. But we don't let it get out of proportion. There are some people that focus only on their physical body. They completely neglect their spiritual, uh, their inner person. They neglect their soul and their spirit, which are the eternal part of us. This body one day will be laid in a grave or cremated. Uh, we'll leave it behind. Um, but while we're here, we do need to look after it. Remember, your body is a temple for the Holy Spirit and you are responsible for its maintenance and upkeep. But keep things in the right perspective is what Paul is saying. And be more proficient uh, in spiritual matters than in physical matters is really what he is saying here. Um, and anything that we save and sow to eternal life will have in eternity. Heaven and earth will pass away. The word of God remains forever. So Paul is just giving here some practical advice to uh, young Timothy. Uh, this is advice that is good for all of us. As always, you can see that the main thing is that we keep things in a proper balance, that we don't get too carried away. We keep things. We have a proper balance in our discipline, in our life, in our, our physical uh, life, and also in our spiritual inner walk with God and serving him. The way that we discipline ourselves in the Word of God is that we read it, we memorize it, we obey it, we study it, we uh, delve into it as much as we can, we talk about it, we, we sing about it, we um, just totally immerse ourselves in God's Word and we will become strong in soul and spirit and the body also uh, gains health from having a healthy soul and spirit. Lord God, Heavenly Father, we bow our heads before you in the precious name of Jesus, your Son and our Lord. We thank you for this new day. We thank you for your mercies that are new every morning. We come into your gates with thanksgiving, through your courts, into your courts with praise. We honour you and bless you and thank you. We thank you, Lord, that you are always teaching us, leading us, guiding us, shaping us, moulding us. Thank you for your word. We thank you that your word is truth. Help us never to stray from your word. May we not stray off your path, Lord. May we stay true to you. May we realize that the only true authority in life is the Word of God. Keep us from gossips, keep us from old wives' tales, keep us from fables. May we know the truth. Lord, we thank you that you have given it to us in your Word. Help us to understand when we read, open our hearts, enlighten us. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the gift of the Holy Spirit, and we thank you that the Holy Spirit resides in our hearts and points to Jesus and teaches us every day. Take us by the hand and lead us, we pray. Father, we pray for our government, we pray for our country, our leaders, we pray that you give them wisdom and understanding and help them to make good judgments and to do the right thing. We pray, Lord, for those who live in tyranny, we pray for those who are suffering in the war-torn areas of the Ukraine and Israel and Palestine and other places, we pray, Lord, have mercy. We pray that people would learn to just live together and stop trying to break into each other's territories and, and dominate other people's lives. Heavenly Father, have mercy. Have mercy on those who are being persecuted for their uh, faith. We, we pray for those that persecute them. They don't know what they're doing. We pray that you forgive them and that you would turn them around the way you turned around Saul on the road to Damascus and made a persecutor of the church into one of the great pillars of the church. Everything is possible for you. 
Father, we pray that you would lay your hand upon the sick and heal them. We thank you for those who have uh, gone through operations, Lord, and who are now healing. We thank you for that. We pray for those who mourn the loss of a loved one. Heavenly Father, would you just comfort them and strengthen them? We pray for the lost. We pray for the dying. We pray for the sick, the homeless, the helpless, the hopeless. We pray for all those, Lord, who serve in our communities. We think of all the great doctors and nurses and, and carers that you have given to us, and we thank you for them, and we thank you for all who are in these particular ministries. Thank you, Lord. Bless them today and always. Father, I pray for those who are listening to this message, that you would strengthen them and, and guide them, and, Lord, just fill them with your Holy Spirit. Thank you for everything, and hear us now as we join together in praying, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom, the power and the glory, now and forever. Amen. My friends, have a blessed day. God be with you. God willing, I'll see you for tomorrow's sermon. Have a great day.